So I'm sure you've seen a Pokemon Hardcore Nuzlocke by this point, and they're pretty hard. But what if I could only use shiny Pokemon on top of that? Sounds like torture, but a little bit of torture never hurt anyone. And so that's why in today's video, I'm going to attempt a Pokemon Hardcore Nuzlocke using only shiny Pokemon. So for those of you who are unaware, the shiny rate for Pokemon in this game is 1 in 4096, being the first generation where they cut the rate down from 1 in 8192. So we have far better rate in this game than if we were tried to do this in any earlier game. This is one super intense run because of the time investment to catch each Pokemon. Overall, I spent about 100 hours in-game grinding just to get the shinies that I did get. And so with that, let's begin our adventure. We do so being rudely awoken by this bird that somehow makes it inside my house. I don't know what my mother's doing, but I guess she just lets birds in the house now. We meet all the other 10 year olds in the town square while they decide on nicknames to call me. I was going to tell them to call me like and subscribe, but it took too long to type in each time. I had to soft reset, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. So like and subscribe right now to make me happy. So I began my soft resetting journey and... After about two hours of soft resetting, I realized how long this was really going to take. Oh! Yeah, fucking hell! Finally! Oh! Like, the sun has fucking practically set at this point. I started my day doing this. Oh my god. But finally, we get our blue boy. Well, I guess he's more of a pasty white boy now, but damn. Froakie's looking a little under the weather. We're gonna get him a potion or something. With Froakie on side now, we can start our first battle of the run with Shauna, an absolute pushover. We say goodbye to our mum. Never coming home. I hate it here with these stupid birds who just wake me up every morning and peck my face. After farming away for this Froakie, I was not ready to start looking for another Mon right now. So we beelined it straight to the next town. On our way towards it though, there was one close call with this trainer with a Pikachu in the woods who hit us with a Thundershock, lowering us by a third and paralyzing us. And even though we got a full Paratic next turn, we still managed to take it out with the bubble just on the following turn. Arriving in the town, we come face to face with Rinka! She gives us the Shadow the Hedgehog boots, and now we can head into Gym 1. I wasn't really expecting too much of a challenge considering it's a bug gym, but it was actually closer than I thought. Viola leads with a Surskit, and we hit it with a couple of quick attacks, and it goes down. Vavillion in now. First turn, she goes for a Harden, and we go for a Bubble, bringing it to just under half. And the next turn, she hits us with an Infestation, which is a damage over time move, so if we took too long, we would lose. We then lure it to red, and with another Bubble, barely, barely hold on from the tick damage, allowing us to get off a final quick attack to seal the deal, acquiring our first gym badge. We make our way through the next route, and while doing a little bit of leveling for Sycamore Fight, we somehow, out of absolute crazy luck, which my eyes couldn't even believe, a shiny full of baby appears. I need to double check if that this is a shiny or not, because I actually don't remember what the fuck full of baby looks like, but I swear I saw a shine. If only the rest were this easy, let me just tell you. For all other encounters, it was like at least 10 hours plus. Now our Froakie evolved into Frogadier and we could take on the Mad Professor. He challenged me with all three Kanto starters and after we defeated him, we were given the option to pick one to take with us. Now technically we can soft reset here for a shiny Charizard, which I would have loved to do, but the time it takes to reset here is insane. I've already gone through it once and I really did not want to do it again. On top of that, you actually have to do the battle again, which was already scary on the first time. So I decided to skip the Charmander. Sad days may rest in the box for eternity. Heading into the next town, we go on a little date with Shauna where we harass this dog in the garden and watch some fireworks go off. What a banging first date. Not that I would know because I've never been on a date before. I just spend my whole day doing Pokemon Nuzlocks. At the end, we get the Poke Flute, which lets me serenade a Snorlax and then beat it to a pulp, of course. And after hopping on some rocks and riding on the slowest Pokemon of all time through this area, they race these things somehow. They move so slow. We come face to face with Team Flare for the first time, but seriously, how the heck did they race Rhyhorns? Like, these have to be the slowest pokes in all the land. I don't know, sweetie. I go pretty fast. I said leave me alone, mum! 
Anyway, Team Flare's acting up, and we gotta rescue this scientist in this cave. We came up to a double battle with Serena, who thankfully took every single attack from the opponent. Honestly, would have been quite scary, because the Scraggy was attack stat boosted plus three by the end. Luckily, though, we take him down without a problem. My main concern at this point was trying not to overlevel for the next gym, but we managed to make it all the way to the leader just before we hit levels 26. Graham was even easier than the previous leader, as his rock monster stood no chance of the power of my pasty boy. Leading with Amora, our Frogadier takes it down with two back-to-back -back water pulses. Next in is Tyrant, who also goes down in just two water pulses. Grant is down, and I won't take that for granted. <laughs> uh, get it? Granted? Grant? Okay. Now the next gym is a fighting type gym, and since Floet doesn't really do much for us at the moment, I want slash need another team member. There are plenty of cool mons in this area, like Houndor, Golette, and Eevee, but as you see, we end up finding a Golette. Shit! I yogurt it in my mouth. Fuck yes! Finally! This could have been anything else but a Golette. This could have been a Sigilyph, a fucking Yanma. It could have been anything. The amount of shit I've seen in this fucking thing. But damn, this hunt took ages. With our third member on the team, now we had a couple of near misses with some trainers, but managed to make it all the way to the Mega Tower. And inside said Mega Tower, we had to battle Serena. And holy pokeballs, this was the closest battle so far, nearly ending in a full team wipe. She led with Esper, and I managed to take it down with a critical shadow punch. But then she switches into Absol. Absol has Bite, which nearly takes out Golet here, but thanks to a magnitude 9, we managed to take it out as well. And here, the problem child who has had way too much to eat, Quilladin, is swapped in. So, I send out Floet and hit it with a Fairy Wind, but his Needle Arm does so much damage and lowers me to red, so I swap to Frogadier, who is weak to Needle Arm, but we land a crit round and outspeed Quilladin. Barely living in the red with our whole party. Oh, thank god, that was the closest fight of my goddamn life. We nearly lost everyone there. Now though, with that near miss barely avoided, we could take on Gym 3. Being a fighting type gym, we had quite good coverage. Menfu went down after two fairy wins from Floet, and out comes Machoke. I elect to swap into Golet now and hit it with a magnitude. Sadly, it was a 5, so it didn't do too much damage. And then we swapped into Frogadier and lowered it to red, but it healed up with a Hyper Potion. I, I forget these gym leaders can cheat, and I, I hate that. Frogadier was in red though, so I swapped back to Golette and took out Machoke with a Shadow Punch. Her final mon is a Horlucha, and from what I could tell, was completely unable to hit my Ghost Neon Boys, so we just take it down with a couple of Shadow Punches. Corinne is a Skater Boy, but we said See You Later Boy as we claim badge number 3. Well, apparently it wasn't See You Later, as we had to go fight her again with this random Lucario in order to get our Mega Bracelets. And now we said See You Later Boy. On our way to the next gym, we hopped on a little goat, way faster than the rock thing we were riding on. I don't know why they don't race these things. And we find a shiny stone, which lets us evolve Floet into Florges. Now I decide is a good time to add our fourth shiny Mon to the team. Originally, I wanted a Mareep, as it's the only huntable Pokemon to be able to Mega Evolve before post-game. But, and you might be saying, what about Gengar? Or, or Alakazam? You have to evolve them, and I can't trade in this game, so, uh, yeah, we couldn't do those either. Mareep did not happen, though, and instead we got a pincer after roughly about 20 or so hours. Yes! Oh! Finally! Oh! Yes! Oh! Oh! Jesus Christ! Oh my Pinsa baby, let's go! I was kind of upset about Pinsa, but as time goes on, I sort of come to really love our shiny bug boy. Anyway, it was time for Gym 4, the grass type gym. And Pinsa was actually the best mon to catch back in the previous route, as Ramos leads with Jump Love, and we send in our Pinsa. He hits me with an acrobatics that drops me to red, but we heal back up with the citrus berry. But I used a stone edge, which lowered Jump Love's speed just enough to outspeed it and take it out next turn with an X-Scissor. In next is this aced Go-Go. 
I decided to stay in and hit it with an X scissor again. This drops it to red, but it does hit me with the bulldoze, which brings me quite low as well. But Ramos heal spams here while I keep dropping it back to red, back to red, and then eventually take it down. Finally, out comes his Weeping Bell, and with Pinsa so low, I really didn't want to risk him dying since we just got him, so I swap into Florgis, and little by little we keep lowering its health, but Florgis reaches red, so we swap into Frogadier to finish it off, claiming badge number 4. Now it's time for some Team Flare action. These boys are hijacking a freaking power plant. Seems kind of terroristic, but uh, whatever. We take down, I don't know, like 10 or so clones using the same team on rotation. Golbat, Mariana, Scraggy, you know, the usual. Making it to Boss Lady here, where her highest mod is level 38. So our level cap is set to that now. We do take it down with Pincer's badass Storm Throw, and we restore power to the city. And now we make it to the Eiffel Tower. I don't know why I said it like that. When in France or whatever. Now we head to the next gym where there's this annoying little girl. Before you can verse my brother, you have to answer a bunch of annoying questions. And, um, I'm just going to waste your time. Ugh, I hated Bonnie. I hate Bonnie. After acing every single question, Bruh. we make it to the gym battle. This boy leads with Amolga and I lead with Golette. We get paralyzed though, which could have been really bad if we didn't take it down after two shadow punches. In comes Helioptile now, and I swap into Pinsa. He hits me with a Thunderbolt, but we hang on and take down Helioptile with a Storm Throw. In comes Magneton now, and I prayed that I outspeeded. And we did, but we didn't kill it. Luckily, he decided to use Electric Terrain for some reason instead, saving Pinsa from certain death. And now, Clement just heal spams. But I managed to outdamage his heals and take it down, earning us gym badge numero quattro. I don't know, more French. You know, we had the Eiffel Tower and that, so why not? I decided now that I needed to add another Pokemon to the team. Maybe a Psychic or Fire or Flying type, anything that gives us a little bit of coverage. So I head back to the Reflection Cave. And I was happy here to get pretty much any shiny from this cave. But after nearly two full days shiny hunting, over 24 hours. <gasps> it's 3 a.m. I... I can't scream, but finally. After we headed towards the next town and the site of the next gym. Versus Valerie. Look at those arms! You all see that shit? How are you holding out your arms like that all day? That's crazy. This gym specializes in fairy types, and her first mod is a mobile, which also has the steel typing. I double sword stance, raising my attack massively, and then one shot mobile with Storm Throw. Feeling confident with my huge attack boost, we take out Mr. Mime next with an X Scissor, and in comes Sylveon. And it goes down after just two Rock Tombs, earning us Gym Badge 6. That was super easy. I wanted to check out where all the Pokeballs were made, and this Flare Goon was blocking my way, so I turned around. Y'all remember these fools, the ones that were following me everywhere at the start? They go up there and distract the guys so I can sneak on inside. Sadly, inside is a bunch more goons, and as we push our way through, we come face to face with a couple of admins. Oh, my goggles gonna fall off, but I hold them on, man! We do have to do two back-to-back -back battles here where we can't heal but they're not too hard. Worth mentioning, both Golette evolved and same with Duosion into their final forms, which both look super cool. Blue Fetus and Neon Golem. Oh my god, that shiny is so freaking cool. This marks the start of the Team Flare Battle Marathon. From here, we basically fight Team Flare over and over and over and over. Heading to the next town, we find a Mamoswine, all upset because its friend, Abomasnow, is being tortured by a bunch of, you guessed it, Team Flare goons. So we put them in their place as well and continue the marathon, only making important stops to do sick rail grinds like Sonic or something. Well, I guess like Shadow, because we did say it was a Shadow Boots. Okay. Mamoswine does manage to help us through this snowy area, and on arrival in the next town, there is a gym. Yippee. Something different than a Team Flare grind. But we have to fight Serena first. Listen, girl, I do not want what you're selling. Leave me alone. Serena again leads with the same old Meow Stick, and basically we just set up a sword stance and roll through her to first two mons. Out comes Absol, so I swap into Florges, who takes it out with a new Dazzling Gleam attack, and Chestnut goes down just the same. Now, it's gym time. 
Unlike pretty much every other gym in this game, I actually don't mind this gym. It's pretty cool, and I was totally not distracted by this intro section at all. Magic power, please. So cool that that happens. I made it to the Olympia Games, and turns out our team is primed for this gym. Leading with Sigalith, I led with my Neon Golo, who takes it out after two Shadow Punches. She sends a Meowstic, which no Shadow Ball, so I quickly swap out into Forges, and take it out after two Dazzling Gleams and her final mon, Slowking, comes in. So to save Florges' life, I swap into Reuniclus, who gets put to sleep, and we stay asleep for a couple of turns as Slowking just stat boosts Carmines, bringing me down to red. So I swap into Greninja, who then substitutes Spans for a bit, and then we swap back to Golet, who tanks a Power Gem, and we finish it off with a Shadow Punch, which earns us our second last Gym Badge. The reason I'm keeping all these punches on Golok as well is because he has the ability where punches just do increased damage, so I think it's been really helping us on this run. Alrighty though, our little gym excursion and Serena battle break are in the past. It's time to get back to our Team Flare Marathon. As Lysander, this obviously villainous guy, reveals himself as the villain, we head straight to the Team Flare hideout on our Golok, who can fly. Now we challenge Lysander to a battle, the first of many I'm sure. Leading with a Mianfu, we take it out with a Shadow Punch and retreat Golurk, who is very low health now. We take out Murkrow with its Surf and take out Gyarados with a Psychic. We almost finish Pyro off, but I know it outspeeds, so I swap into Pinsir, who luckily dodges a Fire Blast and take him out next turn with a Rock Slide. Oh, Pinsir! GG, Lysander. To stop Team Flare's evil scheme, we have to find a key to the elevator to get us down to the main control room. And that's behind another 10 or so Team Flare fights. But they're all the same scraggy Mighty Enna Houndoom clone battles. So after we make it through that, we do have a couple of admin fights, but they're easy as well. Making it to the elevator with the key, we find a giant human! They tell us why he is the way he is, but I wasn't really listening. All I was thinking about is how big his you know what would be, but that's not important. Just stay on topic, RJ. Because this little chunga says one of these absurdly oversized buttons will start the ultimate weapon that will end the entire world, and the other will stop it. Ah, uh, the illusion of choice. No matter what we do, I'm sure the world would end either way. We flip a coin, and I ended up pressing the button which starts the end of the world. So, I guess that's the end of the run. <sighs> if only that was so. It's time to head to yet another Team Flare base. I told you the Team Flare Marathon was a long one. Now we had our second fight with Lysander. Leading with Mian Xiao, I lead with my Blue Fetus who takes it out with a Psychic. We swap into Greninja here as the most unloved fire Pokemon comes out and gets surfed away. Next up is Gyarados. I swap into Golurk now who barely lives in Outrage as we deal so little damage with Shadow Punch. I swap into Floor just because he's stuck in Outrage which doesn't affect the Fairy type. Since it's confused now from its outrage, it allows us a free swap into Reuniclus. And we manage to take it out with a Psychic. Finally, in comes Hunchcrow, who goes down after one Dazzling Gilliam. We head further down the base to try and stop the end of the world. If you forgot, that's what this guy is trying to do. And oh my god! We have to fight like 10 more Team Flare Grunts! I'm over these dudes! How many do we have to fight? Once we defeat all of them, we make it into what I could only assume to be the death chamber. And a deer literally is birthed from the tree of life right in front of my very eyes. And I decided to take it out since it wasn't shiny, we didn't need it. But apparently you're forced to catch this mod. And so we're thrown straight back into battle with it, so I'm forced to catch it in this Master Ball. How annoying. But what is even more annoying is the fact that in the 15 minutes it took me to defeat all of those grunts, and not only beat a Legendary, but then catch a Legendary, Lysander was in his dressing room rushing to get the Go Go Gadget gear on, roiding up his Pokemon with some rare candies so that he could fight us again. It's like, damn it, I lost, I could take these rare candies, you shit, get stronger now! And so... We begin the final fight with Lysander. Mian Xiao is his first Pokemon again, and it forces me to lead with the Xerneas. So I swap into Reuniclus, not wanting to use a non-shiny, which takes it down with the Psychic again, but now it's super weak on the Switch end, meaning we can't use it for the rest of the fight. Pyrrhal goes down to Greninja again, but not before it burns us. Honchkrow is then knocked out by Florges' Dazzling Gleam, which leads to the second Mega Evolution of the run, which is Mega Gyarados. I swap into Golurk now, predicting an Iron Head, which shouldn't do too much to Golurk. 
We then dodge his Aquatel, which might have killed us if it hit. So that allows us the chance to hit Gyarados with a dynamic punch, which does massive damage and confuses him. Scared of the Aquatel though, I swap into Pinscher to stall hurting and confusion, but that doesn't happen. So I swap into Greninja, hoping still for the confusion, which still doesn't happen. But Greninja does dodge. The amount of luck in this fight is insane. I can't believe it. I'm so happy. This gives us one more turn to hit him with a smackdown, which I was hoping would do more. But then luckily, very luckily, before we probably lost Greninja, he hits himself with confusion, winning us the battle. Super, super close battle here where we almost lost our starter. Unfortunately though, the weapon of mass destruction had charged off enough power to fire off a shot. But this so-called world-ending weapon did practically nothing. Like, look at this hole, it's like nothing. I don't know why I bothered if this was all I was capable of. Nevertheless, our Team Flare Marathon is finally over, which sets us on the path towards the final gym of the game. But before we could get there, you know what time it is. Shiny hunting time, baby! We gotta fill the final slot in our team with something. So after about a week goes by, finally this happens. And I forgot to record mic audio here, so I'll reenact it in post. Alright, here we go. Oh my god, this is lit. I'm so happy right now. Finally, a shiny yippee yippee. We got our final shiny now. We can evolve him into a big copper dinosaur. Yay. I went sort of like that, I think. And now we've arrived at the final gym leader after solving this Rubik's Cube puzzle. If this was a real Rubik's Cube, we'd still be at this gym to this day and we would never get through here because I have no clue how to solve these things. The battle begins with my Pinsir vs Bomber Snow. I was thinking about Storm throwing the Ice type but realized that x Eager would be way more effective and we end up one-shotting it. In comes Cryogonal now which I attempt to Storm throw but we get frozen. So I'm forced to swap into something else. I choose Greninja as he should be able to withstand anything that it attempts to use. But then after we bring Cryogonal down with a couple of Surfs and luckily a flinch extra sensory, he sends in his final ace Pokemon, Avalog. With Greninja now being super low health, I decide to switch to Floridus as he begins raising his defense. Luckily, it doesn't matter as Dazzling Gleam does massive damage, bringing him to red, and after he heal stores for two more turns, we take him out, earning us the final gym badge. Which means... Yes, correct random viewer in the chat who is super smart and knows what happens after you get 8 gym badges. It's time for Victory Road and the Elite Four. This also meant our final battle with Serena. God damn, can this girl just leave me alone? I have beaten you at least like five times at this point. I'm not interested in your Girl Scout cookies or whatever you're trying to sell me. This fight goes down how every other fight with Serena has gone down, with her Meowstic dying, then her Vaporeon dying, her Chestnut dying, of course her new Altaria dying, and finally, but definitely not least, her Absol getting absolutely obliterated by my Copper Dino. Blah blah blah, she finally agrees to leave me alone and now it's time for the league. In this generation you get to pick the order you face the Elite Four in. So in this run I started with a Fire type member who I'm convinced was probably a member of Team Flare based on her getup, but I don't know, is that confirmed? Let me know in the comments, I'm actually very curious, is she a member of Team Flare? Malva leads with a Pyro and we take it down with a couple of Psychics from Ryu Nicholas. She then sends in her super scary Chandelure, which for some reason I sent in my Florges against, dealing no damage, so I swap into Greninja getting confused. Luckily however, he managed to still hit the Surf, even though it was confused. Talonflame in next could be a problem, but our starter is a fiend and manages to take it out with another Surf. Oh, what? A tall call now? Yeah, Greninja deletes him from existence as well. One down and three to go. Next up with the Dragon Type member, which I thought wouldn't be too bad with the help of both Florges and Reuniclus. Leading with Dragalg, I elect to set up a bunch of Calm Minds and recover back to full health, taking it out with a Psychic. In comes Octaria, and boom baby, Psychic one shots it. Oh, no even. I should be scared of that, right? It comes in and outspeeds us and lands a hit, but with a double Calm Mind, it does no damage. Reuniclus then takes it down with another Psychic, and finally out comes Drudigan. I wonder if we need to use our Fairy Counter in this battle. Nope, no we don't. One shot, again, boom. All four Mons deleted by Reuniclus in Calm Mind. I feel kind of cheap doing this, but it is what it is. Halfway, let's go. Now it's time to verse the Shovel Knight. Well, he should get a shovel at least, because he's about to dig his own grave. He leads with Klefki, and my shiny bug builds up its attack with a sword stance and takes it down with a storm throw. In comes the nosy boy now, who gets knocked out with another storm throw. 
Oh, what's that? My pincer is a mother loving beast? Yes, he is. Then takes down Scissor with another Storm Throw. Sadly, though, Fighting type doesn't affect Ghost, so our strategy would have to change here, as X Scissor does less than ideal damage, so I swap into Greninja. And as we take some entrance damage, I know he has Sacred Sword, so I'm scared that that would one-shot us, so I like to substitute spam and pray for it to go for a King Shield or something, so we can get a free hit in. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen, and as our health dips to just three, I prepare to sacrifice Greninja, but luckily he lands a crit on his Surf, taking it out. Oh! I don't think it would have killed if it didn't crit, so that was super clutch. Now, there's only one Elite Four member remaining, and it's the Water-type member. And if you like Water-types, well, that's my next Mono run I'm doing, when I join Team Aqua's Crusade in Pokemon Omega Ruby. Leading with Clawwitzer, I lead with Florges. Luckily, it can't deal too much damage with Water Pulse, so the first thing I do is set up a double Carmine, and take it to red with a Magical Leaf. He goes for a heal, and so I set up the third Carmine, which lets us one shot with a Magical Leaf next turn. Big brain strats, I know. In comes Gyarados now, who is actually pretty scary. We drop it quite low with a Dazzling Gleam, but since it Dragon Dances first turn, raising both its speed and attack, it probably means it will now outspeed us and be able to one shot us, but we did get it low enough where it will probably heal next turn. So, I go for a Dazzling Gleam, which brings it back down to the exact same HP after it heals, but knowing it won't heal again, I fear the outspeed, so I swap into Greninja, which I'm hoping outspeeds it. And it does, taking it out next turn with an Ice Beam. Barbarical is in next, and his kit can be quite scary, so I swap into Golok to Equake it. Luckily, it goes for a Crush Chop here, which can't affect Golok because of the Ghost Typing. And luckily, oh so luckily, Razor Shell doesn't do enough to take us out. And Equake takes it down. His final Mon Stami isn't too much of a worry either as we sub in Pinsa and finish it off with an X-Scissor. It's time. We've come so far on our adventure with our shiny team, it was time to conquer the champion. Leading with Holucha, we lead with Reuniclus. Not wanting to risk Holucha's wrath, I go straight for the kill taking it out with the Psychic as it tries to set up. In comes Gorgeist though, which counters my Reuniclus, so I swap into Pinsa and go for the X-Scissor to try and take it out. But since it changed my typing to Ghost, we lose our same type attack bonus and doesn't deal enough damage to take it out. So as it tries to Phantom Force, I swap into Aggron to take the hit. As it changes Aggron's type again, I swap back to Pinsa to take the next Phantom Force and take it out with an X-Scissor. Now, out comes Tyrantrum. Since this is the final battle, I elect to sacrifice Pinsir here. As we hit it with the Storm Throw, bringing it super low, it takes out our shiny bug with a head charge, which does do a little bit of damage to him, bringing him to red now, but it does allow me a free swap into the MVP, the Neon Golurk, who takes it out with an Equate. In comes Aurorus now, who gets off a Reflect, which makes it so our Equake just doesn't deal enough damage. And as Diantha fully heals Aurorus back up to full health, we lower it back down again, and on the next turn, it takes us out with a Blizzard. No! Not my Neon Golem! I love this man! He's so cool! We send in Floor just now to finish off the job. I predict Gudra to come in next, as she always saves the Mega for last, and so after two Dazzling Gleams, we take it out. This is it! The final Mon! And it Mega Evolves into Mega Gardevoir! I deal as much chip damage as I possibly can with Floor just before it's taken out, and we sub into the Copper Dino to finish off the Fairy type with the Iron Head! Thunderbolt, eh? Let's go, Akron! Let's go! Hell yes! Oh, we lost three of our shiny Pokemon, but, you know. And that's it! Losing three of our shiny Pokemon was a small price to pay, considering we beat Pokemon X doing a hardcore Nuzlocke using only shiny Pokemon. What an incredible run. Played incredibly well by yours truly, and as we recap on our beautiful team here, I appreciate you watching this video, and if you enjoyed, please consider dropping a like and subscribing, as it really, really helps small creators like myself. And with that, I want to say, have a great day, and I'll see you later. Bye for now.